outside is frightful, but the fire is so delightful. Since we've no place to go, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Hi everyone and welcome and welcome back to another video. So in today's video I thought it would be fun to see how many Christmas books I can read in 24 hours. I don't really have a TBR for this, I'm just going to kind of choose a book and read it kind of thing because I don't want to set a TBR because then, I don't know, I feel like I just don't really have specific books I would like to read so I'm just going to have a look and see what there is. So I was thinking, I have already looked for the first one and I was thinking of reading Trick Shot, I think it's called. Yeah, and I have heard nothing about this one, being completely honest, but from the looks of it, it's kind of like a spicy one. So I am just going to get into it right now, and I will give you all an update when I have one. Okay, update time, and I thought I would just read it because this is obviously a novella, which I don't think I mentioned. So there's no point in me actually updating anything. But I did write some notes as I was going along, so I'm just going to read them to you and then I will obviously from there. So the first one I put was that it was a very, very weak plot. It is, I feel like there wasn't a plot, if you if we're being completely honest. There wasn't really and obviously I like to have a plot in my books. Obviously, in my opinion, you can't have a book without a plot you know and so this just really made me not enjoy it this was also i'm gonna be honest your smut which i was okay i kind of had a feeling because of what it's about but i like i said would have liked a bit of plot in it as well as you know that if we really had to have it so the next one i put is the story i felt forced because there was obviously no plot there could have been a storyline in a sense so I felt like there was like the author was trying to make a plot, trying to make a storyline into something that there wasn't one. I don't know how to explain it. Honestly, it's quite confusing. And then I put it was too insta lovey, as in the fact of like you was barely a couple of pages in and already things are happening, and I don't want that. Like I've said before in the past, sometimes I don't mind insta love, but not this insta lovey. Like I don't know, like insta love, I don't mind if it's done correctly but this one obviously wasn't because i didn't like it there was no character development so i couldn't connect to the characters i was reading the note and then continued yeah so there was no character development so i can't connect to the characters if i don't know who the characters are and that is what i find difficult because obviously while you're reading the story you want to know a bit about the characters that you're reading you want to connect to the characters you want to actually enjoy reading about the characters this one I didn't because obviously you don't get anything about them personally and so it's hard to connect to them. Then I put it felt kind of like fanfic if I'm being completely honest. I don't know if it is or not, I don't think it is but it kind of felt like it a little bit. So these are a few things that I think are wrong about them exactly. So in my opinion there's so many wrong things about them. One, they lied to her about who he was. So. I haven't actually talked about what this book is about, but I'll get into that in a minute. So they lied to her about who he was, and in my opinion, I hated that. That was so wrong. That actually irked me, like cringed me out because I'm like, after literally all that, it was all a lie, and I hated that because that is just so deceiving, and I just don't like it in a book when one of the characters are being deceived in the matter of this, like because it was so smutty and she didn't know who he was. I just. I don't know, that really annoyed me. MM relationship played a bigger part than she did. She was 100% an afterthought, which is basically meaning like, it's supposed to be, so there's like two males and a female, and then I felt like it was like the relationship between the two males, and then the uh, MMF, she was just there. Like, <laughs> like there was like, oh, she's here. Okay, let, let, let's, notice her kind of thing afterwards i didn't really feel like she had to be in the story if i'm being completely honest like there was no reason for that except for obviously um the author wanting to make it a bit more happy but i don't know i just feel like maybe the author could have just uh, like given it like done an mm story and it probably would have been a lot better to be honest because then you're gonna feel like one of them's being left out <laughs> and then lastly was how fast you forgave him so considering how big of a betrayal that was that he lied to her about who he was oh don't you worry i forgive you literally a couple of pages after like how can you forgive someone i'm not saying you can't but how can you forgive someone so 
easily about something so huge i don't know i feel like it was just kind of brushed off in my opinion that's kind of like a serious topic a serious thing and i feel like it was just brushed off not really talked about it was like oh <laughs> it's fine that you lied to me you know so i just really didn't like that either if i'm being completely honest i just it really really annoyed me so the next book i'm going to read is the christmas exchange so i don't know much about this oh i'll tell you about what um what's it called trick shot was about so i'm going to read the synopsis of it oh and i did also write this one star if you couldn't tell because i just hated it also another thing i didn't mention is i feel like it also didn't feel christmasy at all there was no christmas vibes even though it's supposed to be kind of christmasy that like, obviously it mentioned christmas there was no Christmas vibes in my opinion. So it says, Leo McKnight, an identical twin to a famous hockey player, finds himself caught up in a case of mistaken identity on Christmas Eve. When Leo unexpectedly bumps into the captivating Riley at the airport, he's both amused and intrigued by her assumptions that he's his re-owned brother. Embracing his mischief side, Leo decides to play along, releasing in their flighty banter and clever exchanges. But as fate would have it, their flight gets cancelled, and Leo seizes the opportunity to spend more time with Riley. With a devilish night at his penthouse with an intriguing woman, his best friend Chase, and a whole night of possibilities ahead of them, Leo has all the ingredients for what promises to be a memorable Christmas Eve. And it says here, so uh, snuggle up with a cozy blanket, indulge in a cup of steamy hot chocolate and allow the magic of Christmas to transport you into this steamy novella. I couldn't because I didn't like it that much. I just felt like I couldn't relax. And it's only 196 pages. So I don't know. This wasn't for me. And I'm looking at the reviews and most people have D DNF'd it. There's one person here who's rated it 5 stars, 4 stars, and I'm just like, 4.5 stars. I'm just like, how? I would like to, I'm not judging, I would just like to know what they liked about this book personally. Like, am I, am I just not seeing it? I don't know. But that is that book. But anyway, I'm going to move on to the Christmas Exchange and then I will give you all an update. And how, how long is this book? Oh, 168 pages. So I'll probably just come back to you once I've finished it because you can't really update halfway through, you know. So I'll be back with you all. Okay, so I have finished the Christmas exchange and I don't really have much to say about it. I literally have one note that I put down because obviously I don't want to forget anything. And I, all I literally put was was that I, with the same as the first one, I wouldn't say it's Christmas themed, like it mentioned Christmas, but you don't get the Christmas vibes or Christmas feels. I would say it's more like if you want a winter book, then this would be great. If you want a Christmas book, I wouldn't pick this one personally because honestly, it has really, nothing really to do with Christmas. I don't feel the Christmas vibes. Like there's so many more books out there if you want the Christmas vibe and this one is just definitely not it. And then I put the story didn't flow and a lot of what was said was repetitive. So I feel like the story was jumping around everywhere to the point where you couldn't really make sense of like what was going on. And it was it was quite confusing. And then what was being said was being said more than once. So like you'd get like one scene and like something happen and then they'll like move on from it and then it would like come back. I, I don't know. It was just... It was very confusing, but I'm thinking to myself, have I burnt myself out with all the Christmas books? <laughs> because I, I don't know, or it's just because I'm choosing Christmas novellas. I'm not, I'm not choosing good ones. I don't know what it is. I'm going to read to you what it's about so that, I don't know, if you want to read it after my review, then you can. So I did write this 2.5 stars. It wasn't as bad as the first one. I did enjoy it a little bit more. There was nothing else that I really hated about it. It was just the things that I pointed out. So I, I'm going to read the synopsis to you now of the book and then you can decide whether you would like to read it from that or not when reagan returns home for christmas the last thing she expects is to reunite with her two old best friends it's been a year since she saw last saw julian and miles and seeing them again awakens old feelings when their families decide to celebrate the holiday together the three of them take a spontaneous trip to the mountains to spend the weekend skiing no one can predict the weather and a terrible snowstorm hits, leaving them snowed in together, with one bed and refacing feelings, and instead of a tradition Christmas exchange, they want to exchange her. Another point that I didn't actually point out, which I obviously forgot to write down, is I, honestly, I don't think this should have been an MMF romance, if I'm being completely honest. I felt like our female character, she had more of a connection and I felt like she loved Julian more than Miles. Like, I feel like they had more of a connection and I think that's because they both, like, all of them have had, like, some going on in the past. But I don't know, she mentioned what happened with Julian more and she mentioned Julian more. Like, I don't know, I feel like, I, it could just be me, 
But I just felt like maybe she should have just ended up with Judy. You know? I don't feel like she should have ended up with them both. Could be me. But it probably also would have been fun if this was like a full book and she decided to go with Julian and then there was like drama because Miles is like, you took her away from me, but they're friends. I felt like that would have been more fun. Drama, you know? But it wasn't that. So that is that for that book. I went on a little rant about it, to be honest. But I would, would I recommend it? I don't know. If you're looking for a smutty MMF novella, then great. Again, with the Christmas thing, like I think I've already mentioned this there's no not really any christmas vibes you know um so that is that one i don't know what i'm going to read next i am thinking a christmas truce which i actually think is another novella let me have a look oh it's longer 219 pages not much longer though so i am going to go and read this and then i will give you all an update okay so I finished what's it called a Christmas truce and I I'm going to write this one star I know I know I know but I just personally didn't enjoy this and I was looking at I forgot to write notes as I was going along but I was looking at reviews on Goodreads and like seeing what other people said and there was one review that I was like oh my gosh I agree to everything that this review says so I'm going to read out that review to you and what it says is literally what I think because this person I, like literally said everything that I said so it says honestly I hated it the title had no sense until the very end and there's not even a lot of Christmassy vibes in it I think the concept was good but it wasn't written well also it was written in the third person which I didn't care for at all I didn't feel like I connected with the characters I wish it had been dual POV instead of just Libby I feel like here in Seth's side would have made it better. So that's what this person said. And everything I agree with. Literally that's the thought that I had in my head. And then I saw this. I was like, so literally this person has read my mind. Although they would have read it first. But you know what I mean. Um, so that is my, <laughs> well not my review. But that's literally what I thought about it. And this review spoke to me. Because I was like, this is exactly what I think. I'm glad I'm not alone. Because I took out some reviews. And most people liked it. And I was like, hmm. Am I just not the, like, the only one that don't like 52% of five stars and then 28% of four stars. So I just felt like I was missing something, you know, but I'm glad I'm not the only person. So I am going to, I did write this one, so if you didn't guess. So I'm going to read the synopsis to you like I have with the others. Photographer Libby just got fired again and then she gets home early to find her boyfriend in bed with another woman. And just like that, her dreams of Christmas Day proposal are shattered. Libby lands a new job as a personal assistant to businessman Seth Coleman. He's terse and demanding. It's no wonder Libby keeps messing up. Then one day an adorable golden retriever puppy is delivered to the house. As Libby helps Seth train Barney, she realises that there's a surprisingly sweet side to the CEO. But everything goes wrong with Li when Libby finds out that Seth's company just bought the community centre where they've been training Barney. It's not only puppy classes, it's a lifeline for the whole village. Libby is devastated when Seth says it's just business, so she packs her bags until disaster strikes and Libby is forced to spend her favourite time of the year with a man who doesn't even own tinsel. It's up to Libby to bring some much-needed Christmas spirit, starting with the truth since they're going to be stuck together whether they like it or not. But Libby might just find magic under the mistletoe after all if she can encourage Seth to open his heart to Christmas. All the books that are disappointing but i think i've slowly burnt myself out with christmas books and i know they're all novellas but you know i don't know anyway so i am going to end the video here i know it's supposed to be 24 hour room change but i'm going to try and kind of cheat a little bit because i have read three and obviously it's supposed to be christmasy and because i'm rating all the books bad i feel like that might be the reason the one i did start just now but i am going to put on hold is kiss her once for me i started it but i'm just not feeling it right now so i am going to just put it down for now i will finish it by the end of december but just for now i'm gonna put it down and put it on hold you know because i'm just obviously not feeling it so that is the end of this video thank you so much for watching i'm sorry if it is short i'm not sure how long this is i tried my best and i'm sorry that it's not the best video i am slacking a bit because bookmas is really taking it out on me you know i'm so exhausted but anyway thank you so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed and i hope to see you all in my next one tomorrow bye <laughs>